Hi, good morning everybody. Um, I am going to be um, going over page 29, which is reactions of acids with metals. All right, so when we look at this page, first thing is up at the top, it says circle the metals that react with acids and answer the questions using the metals provided. So um, if we were going to circle all of the metals that do react with acids, we would be circling everything except for um, silver, gold, and copper. All of our other metals here do react. Now it asks, which of these metals react most readily with an acid to produce hydrogen gas? Which means you are looking for the metal on table J that is also on this list, to be specific, um, that would be highest on table J and out of the metals that we are given here it looks like the answer to that is barium that barium would be the one that is highest on our reactivity list now this one then asks which one would react at the slowest rate when placed in an acid now I interpret this question very specifically all right I interpret it as which one would react slowest but still react, which means we need to be above hydrogen on table J, and that would give us lead. Alrighty, coming on down the page to the equations, which was really where I was focusing when I was looking at your work. So this first one, that is chromium reacting with hydrochloric acid. I did this one as an example for you in class, or sorry, <laughs> in the last video which I guess is kind of like in class. Um, in all of these examples, I am going to put our salt first and our um, hydrogen gas second. And since every single one of these is going to produce hydrogen gas, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in on these first few examples. All right, so here we've got chromium plus chlorine Chromium is group two, chlorine is group 17. That means that we need two chlorines for every chromium. When I go to balance this, I just need to put a two in front of the hydrochloric acid. All right, now I'm gonna come down to our next one. We've got lead reacting with sulfuric acid. Now lead has a charge of plus two. So does sulfate, which means their charges right? It would be plus two and minus two. They will effectively cancel each other out, which means we don't need to show any subscripts there. Um, because our hydrogen gas, remember, it always needs to be diatomic. It's, we've already shown that here. Just as a reminder, we've got two hydrogens on this side. Everything is balanced here in question four. Now let's move on to question five. This is one that people had a little bit of difficulty with. All right, so I've got titanium reacting with phosphoric acid. All righty, titanium reacting with phosphoric acid. Now titanium has a charge of plus two, and this is going to be important to us because our phosphate that it is going to be bonding with, remember, I'm just getting rid of that hydrogen, now I'm only gonna look at this phosphate. Um, it has a charge of minus three. So when we go to write this equation, we need a subscript of a two in front, or sorry, behind the phosphate and a subscript of a three behind the titanium. And now we have to deal with the balancing. And when we balance this, we are going to need, I'm gonna start here because we need two phosphates. Well, let me just get rid of this business, okay. Because we need two phosphates, we are going to need two of this entire compound of the phosphoric acid. That means that I'm then going to need three H2s because I need a total of six because I have six over here. This gives me my two phosphates and then I finish out the balancing by providing myself with those three titaniums. All right, um, our next one is much easier, okay? Barium has a charge of plus two, sulfur has a charge of minus two, got two hydrogens too. It's all balanced. It's done super easy. Um, our next one 
is manganese fluoride is our salt and our H2 and to balance that we're just going to throw a 2 in front of that hydrofluoric acid okay um, fluorine has a charge of minus 1 manganese has a charge of plus 2 that's why we had to do that for our subscripts alrighty let's come on down to our last three examples so once again just going ahead and filling in that diatomic hydrogen gas in every single example because that is what I need to do and if you do that first you will never find yourself wanting to do some weirdo making it H3 or just leaving it H no you can't do that it has to be diatomic hydrogen gas all right our next one we are doing our sodium combined with our bromine that is a plus one and a minus one they cancel each other out so we have sodium bromide and all we need to do here is now deal with our balancing we have to do this in order to get these two hydrogens for our diatomic gas um, one thing I want to say at this point remember your metal component of your salt that positive cation is always 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 what is going to um, be first in your compound don't forget it alrighty coming on over here to probably the one that was the second most difficult on the page and that was the reaction of strontium with acetic acid now our hydrogen that is coming off is this last one I love the way this is written because it isolates that hydrogen gets it on its own okay so that we can deal with that we know that's the one that's coming off to make our hydrogen gas okay now um, our strontium has a charge of plus two and acetate if you look on table E has a charge of minus one so the way that this is going to form its salt we're gonna need two of those acetates so I'm writing CH3 C O O parentheses and I'm gonna need two of them in order to balance out these charges make sure we have a nice zero charge neutral compound then to balance this very easy I'm gonna throw a two in front of my acetic acid and I'm done alrighty so let's go to number 10 our last one we're gonna form calcium carbonate as our salt and we have our hydrogen gas over here sorry I accidentally erased that um, calcium has a charge of plus two carbonate has a charge of minus two so those charges balance out we don't have to do anything special to get our balancing it's already balanced by the way calcium carbonate is the main component of eggshells and um, this is a reaction that technically kind of happens inside chickens when they form those eggshells it's kind of cool alrighty um, that's it for page 29 reactions of acids with metals message me if you have any questions all right I'll catch you next time have a great one